Hello there. So if you notice, I might be in a slightly different background than you're used to if you watch my channel more than once. I'm in Michigan right now, vacationing, but wanted to create a tutorial, so here we are. So welcome if you're new. We're working with a Jupyter Notebook. That's a way to use Python code primarily. And there's resources on my GitHub link that I will put in the bottom of this YouTube video where you can learn how to install things. If you're completely lost, leave a comment and I hope this could be a good way to introduce you to programming through fantasy football. So first off, I, I ran into an issue as a commissioner in the league I'm in now, so a co-commissioner where my job is to make the schedule. And we're in a divisional league, so we have to have things like play people in your division, how many times should you play, and we like to do it twice per year in the in the season. And the schedule generator on Yahoo surprisingly doesn't have any features, it just says shuffle. And that's not great. I'm surprised I didn't just put something this basic in there, but here's the code to make sure you can play people in your division multiple times and code different variables of like, you know, how many times or how many teams and a starting point if you wanted to create your own schedule generator. So first off, we're gonna get teams from Yahoo. Very simple copy and paste I'll show you to, you know, get that loaded in there. And then we'll generate the schedule, go through the various algorithms and considerations I did, validate it next. The next step, you know, validating, making sure it actually works. It took me a lot of time to make sure, you know, what I generated was right. And then to upload it, I'll show you how I created in Jupyter an easier way to, to see what, um, what you need to put into Yahoo. So first off, I'm just on the league page of my, my league. If you just copy and paste the teams here, and put them um, into a big string. We can use this Python code to split things by this tab character and also the new line to generate all the teams. I have this little length thing here to make sure we have 16, which is the number of people in my league. Next up, we'll just shuffle things. This does it in place, so you don't need to say all teams equal random.shuffle. And it will make sure everything else we do is randomized. So doing this now makes it easier later for us. So we randomize our team names. Next step is assign them to divisions. Here I'm doing the division operator. So I'm saying whatever team number you are in that list before, so 0, 1, 2, 3, computers start counting at 0. Um, take that, divide by 4, and then remove the remainder. So 3 divided by 4 would go to 0. The fourth would go to 1. So that's how things are grouped here. And that'll make it easier for us to validate later in a matrix where we can see how many times a, a team played another team. Next up, we have conferences. Pretty much the same way we'll generate it. We're going to do divided by, I believe I did eight here effectively. So 16 teams divided by two, since we have two conferences. If your league wants to have four or you have 12 teams, you know, adjust accordingly. Two should be pretty standard. Same thing though with that little divisor. Okay. Next up, we have game types. So for the league that I'm in, I thought it would be good to have themed weeks. So when it's divisional week, everyone plays someone in their division. When it's conference week, you play someone in your conference, etc. And this is easy way to do that. We just put all these into a list, then we shuffle them. And then I wanted it to be divisional first and divisional last week. So I just insert and append at the end to, to get those two things. So if you just run this a bunch of times, you know, if you see when that looks right, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I thought the divisionals should be slightly spaced out, so I would have gone with something like this. All right, now here's the actual scheduling piece. So we have a few building blocks. We're gonna you know, use these to figure out what themed week it is, and we'll use that with our actual schedule generator later on to you know, pick a random week slate for that week. The constraints that we're gonna work with, and what I did for the, the league I'm in, is one game max between non-divisional teams. So you know, sort of spread the love and play a bunch of people rather than a few people, and then play two people in your division. And because these are such simple constraints, we don't need to do too much sophisticated stuff, and the optimization of finding a valid solution to the schedule is easier. If you were doing if we were doing something like the NFL, where they have like the New York Jets and the New York Giants playing in the same spot, that would be a tricky constraint to code in. Uh, it's doable, but there's more sophisticated algorithms to do that effectively because eventually you run into a lot of invalid schedules, whereas thankfully ours is pretty simple. If we 
number of weeks we're working with here. So yeah, this will be four plus four plus four plus one plus one. So that's 14 weeks of, of game time. Then three weeks of playoff is what we do. All right. So here, what I'm doing is I'm generating what I'm calling a universe. So each team is going to have a list of other teams that can play for the given constraint type. So for a divisional week, you know, you can pick people from your division. You can see that if you peek ahead here, two times for each team. And this is the code to generate that. I just take the set of all teams in a given division, subtract out the team that's looking for its universe so it doesn't play itself, and then multiplying by two to make that twice as big. For conferences, similar logic, except I removed out the divisional. That's not 100% necessary, but it just made things simpler. And then non-conference opponent, I did you know, just select from the other conference. And this deep copy helps with an issue, I believe, I ran into this issue in debugging, where if you change a list and you change one part of it, you might be changing the, the pointer to that list and not the list itself. So there's some quirky things there. So deep copy comes to the rescue. Fireworks. All right. So here's the code to generate matchups. So given a universe, this is going to generate a week of matchups. It's going to go through and say, start with a team. Um, this is just using all teams. Look in that team's universe, and then look who's already playing, so you don't you know, have a team playing multiple games in one week. And those will be all the choices. Pick a random one, and then remove that team from each universe. So team one will have its opponent removed, and then team two, since it's you know reflexive, playing someone. And yeah, that'll update the universe. This is all locally, that's why I'm using this little underscore. And same with the other one. And then I update the teams playing here by using a, a union on who's playing. And then update the matchups. So this is just going to return the whole week's matchups. And given that information, we can update the other universes as appropriate. And that will create a valid schedule throughout. Okay, so we have weekly teams playing. That's a set. You know, teams shouldn't play more than once. Games played. I don't even know if I used that one. That's probably not used. And then the weekly matchups. The weekly matchups is the main thing we're generating here. For the schedule generation, we're just going to go through and look at each game type per week. So we already generated that before. And we're going to generate matchups. So based on the game type, if it's a divisional, we'll use the divisional universe. And then if the matchup is valid, I'm going to skip this part for now, we will go through and remove those teams from their respective universes so they're not shown as valid. You know, if I played someone in the conference universe and it was a divisional game, they shouldn't exist there anymore, so remove them. Also, with this code, um, it's possible that the randomness generates an invalid solution for a given week, just based on how things were sampled. So if one team only has one valid opponent left and they share it with someone else, that wouldn't work, you have to restart. And it's possible even that the overall game slate, so or the overall schedule could be invalid at some point. So you, you might wanna even have another try catch with the temps and randomness higher up, encapsulating this whole piece here. Thankfully, the constraints I coded in are very simple. And in, in all the times I ran this, it led to a solution. If you're doing something like the NFL schedule, that is something where you have a lot of invalid solutions and use more sophisticated programming to, to handle that and you know go through big quadrillions of possible options, even uncountable numbers, really. I mean, maybe technically they're countable, but it'd be hard to count. OK, so I generated things, printed out what was going on in each week. And because we started each matchup thing with the set of all teams, that always is ordered, and we have the seventh floor crew person first. So looking at this, you can see it doesn't look like anyone's played three times in a row. It looks relatively diverse. And we can see you know, some matchups twice. So real Edwards got played twice. It doesn't look like there's a fake Edwards sitting in there, so that's good. Anyways, um, yeah, so it looks roughly right. Here's code to more sophisticatedly validate things. So what we're doing here is generating the co-occurrences. When do these two teams play each other is what I'm saying here. And to do that, this is pretty much it. You make a matrix by the length of all teams each. So this is 0 to 16, or 0 to 15. This is also 0 to 15. 
this first cell here represents team one playing itself. That can't happen, so it's great. All these are zero. And this represents team one playing team two, team one playing team three, team one, team, team four, so etc. You can see that conferences are respected. You see these clusters of twos, so that's great. Four by four, that's what you would want since we split things by four to make it easier to analyze this later on. And then you can see the conference matchups. So they did also get all their conference opponents one time. The non-conference, it wasn't a guarantee they played all those people. So this looks right, and it's exactly the same as what you'll see on Yahoo, where they have you know a little bit more UI flavor. They had the same co-occurrence matrix. And with the schedule, I generated it before, and it uh, you know, the randomness gave me this result. So yeah, it looks roughly right. You can see, again, the conference things, and you can see the, um, what's the word? The uh, conference has these ones here. This is the non-conference, the ones where it's not all filled. So yeah, it looks right. Um, now if we wanted to put this into Yahoo, here's how you do that. So here we have our matchups. If I put them into what's called a data frame, kind of like a nice Excel sheet in Python, we can, You'll have to transpose it. That's what this dot t is doing. So it says sort of flip. Here, kind of did that wrong, but like that. Um, so this way we have rows that are each week, and then each column, or sorry, rows are each game of a week, and then uh, columns are each team. <laughs> I keep getting a tongue twister there. The columns are each week. You can see that clearly. One to fourteen. All right, got through that one. Um, and I saved that. So you know, when I was actually doing the league, I wanted to just freeze it in case I have to up things, update things later. And yeah, now for putting things into Yahoo, I printed out the division so I could do that tab of the commissioner page. And then after I did that, I went through and just said week one, okay, what is it? Week two, what is it, et cetera, et cetera. And this prints that out, tells you what type of matchup it is. So I made a lot of rivalry weeks because I had uh, divisional themed weeks every time. Everything was so themed that it, it kind of made sense. Maybe people get tired of whatever a rivalry week is, but that's okay. And yeah, just went through. It's a little tedious. I might create uh, another video where I show you how to automate this piece. You can do that with some basic uh, browser emulation. But yeah, you just got to put them in there. It doesn't take that long. Maybe it took me 15 minutes to do all 14 weeks. Double check your stuff, validate with the matchup matrix, and you should be good to go. Yeah, thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn anything more, um, here's some things you could research. So here's how the NFL problem is and how some people solved it using, uh, what's this called, mixed integer? Or sorry, just integer programming, not mixed integer. And this is one technique in optimization theory you can use to solve complicated problems like the traveling salesman or the scheduling problem. Also, constraint programming is another way to think of things. That's where you sort of say, hey, give me this you figure out how to do it, so it's called declarative programming. And if you sort of say, hey, I want to like solve Sudoku. One time I wrote a Sudoku solver by using constraint programming. It was super easy because I didn't need any algorithms. I just needed to formulate what I want, so it was great. Um, that's a Wikipedia page for that. And then Coursera. I did take a course on discrete optimization. That was pretty funny, and it was a really good course. I think I honestly flunked it, but I, I did learn a lot of things, and uh, it was fun. So I uh, would recommend that if you're interested in this sort of stuff and want to get more into optimization programming. Anyways, thank you for watching, and good luck with your fantasy football schedule, seasons, everything. All right.